Hey gang, Mocha Boy here from Reddit Force, and welcome back to another episode of Reddit Force Chronicles. Uh, before we get started in today, I've been getting a lot of PMs over Reddit about, uh, you know, asking questions about recruitment. Um, if you get the chance, go to our uh, our public subreddit. It's Reddit Force Clan, and uh, there's a link there uh, for application requirements that gives you all the explanation and all the instructions for, for how to join. Uh, we may not be able to get to you right away because we're in uh, you know current training mode with our current crop of recruits, uh, but we will get back to you eventually, especially if you if you fit the mold. So, anyway, with that said, uh, we're going to be doing another base design video today with a new base that I put together using some of the concepts that I laid out in the Reddit Force Guide to Base Design, uh, you know, from a few videos back. Um, this is this is a new base as far as I can tell. I haven't seen anything like it, but uh, I was pretty <laughs> pleased with the way that it, it ended up working out. Now, before we get into that, I just want to talk about the design goals for this again uh, the, the 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 primary design obviously is to defend but uh, to hold you know th10 and potentially even th9 attacks to one star now the way that this base does it is in a sort of novel way and and you'll you'll see how that was put into practice in just a second so let's take a look at the base um, <clears throat> Now again, I don't have a name for this, and you know, the longer it goes without a name, the better off you all are, because this is not something that I like to put uh, forum posts together. I don't want anyone studying the base, but I mean, I like to put this out here uh, so that we have something to discuss, and I can illustrate some of the concepts. So concept number one is spawn points. Now, the interesting thing about the way that this base is designed is that the spawn points are pushed out to way, way, way out here. So although the TH is more or less exposed to the western flank, it's almost impossible to target the TH from, say, this position here. Hang on a second. Uh, from this position here, because uh, try to try to think about um, the trigger ranges or the targeting ranges for troops. Let's say you drop your BK right here, and this building's down, this building's down, this building's down, this building's down. The first thing that he'll target is this building. Once that building goes down, the next building he'll target is that building, and then this building, and then that building. And you see, it it's it it's an ever expanding arc uh, as they go through the base. Now, the thing is, unless all of these buildings go down first, unless, you know, this entire half of the base goes down, you know, that entire, sorry, let me just do it this way, unless every single one of these buildings here and every single one of these buildings here are taken out, at that point, maybe you can target the, t the town hall, but, you know, th that means having to hold back your troops until you know for sure that uh, that you can target the town hall. So that is one, you know, a late deploy of a hero could could solve that. But I'll show you in the replay that e even the, a super late deploy couldn't help that particular attacker because he led with de defense led troops and then left all of these buildings um, pretty much un untouched when he uh, when he laid down his troops. So uh, the other thing that I wanted you to, to to pay attention to are the fact that these defenses here are actually outside the walls. But they're per but they're also protected by bulwarks. So the reason that this is important is if you ever have uh, if you ever have a defense outside of your your base, you can actually load it up or you can protect it with your your storages. So the the the, the purpose of this is to tie up wizards long enough for uh, your your point defenses and whatever other defenses you have here to burn down the tanks. So. Um, you know, if a golem were to come in here, the golem would get plugged in there, and then the wizards would probably held up for would probably be held up for a good 20 or so seconds, while about I'd say 100 DPS is raining down on that that golem, uh, and and that goes for all of the defenses in this ring. Now, as far as the targeting range is concerned, uh, again, one of the big things, one of the most important things that you can do for targeting is to ensure that these exterior defenses don't breach this uh, this targeting line. That means anything that attacks one of these defenses will have to attack yet another defense before it actually makes it inside the trigger range. Uh, so unless they commit a very large amount of troops, they're not going to be able to make it past the trigger range. And um, I mean, there are a few ways to get past this, but uh, you know, it's all about making an, a large investment in troops, because every troop that they invest in luring out your clan castle is going to be one less that they'll have to attack you with once the actual attack starts. Uh, but as far as uh, bomb placements are concerned, you have double giant bombs here protected by a hidden Tesla, uh, and there's multiple bomb pockets. You can throw them in here. You can throw them. Uh, you can throw them in here, uh, and in a few other places. Uh, I, I have to tweak kind of the. Uh, I have to tweak the defensive placements to make some more spots available. 
But the most important thing here is um, is this here, and that's this bumper. Like, there's nothing but dead space in this area. So if you were to attack this with dragons, if you were to attack this with pretty much anything, uh, the those troops would have no choice except to except to uh, kind of go off in this direction and go off in that direction and end up, end up having to fight the entire base off anyway even after all of their targeting so um, the other the other thing to note about this is uh, the buildings the buildings that I placed on this side of the base are all low hit point buildings these are all you know these are all gimmies uh, that, that that I'm willing to um, that I'm willing to to give up uh, you know for for what um, you know, for an attack, and that means you know these these army camps here. These are all one percent, but look how much space they take up. All of the real percentage is is in the back of the base. So if they attack from this side, you know they'll end up getting rerouted around the town hall. But if they attack from this side, you know they'll spend so much time burning down these external structures that the uh, point defenses will have a chance to whittle them down before they ever make it inside the base. So, uh, you know, it's 1% in this direction, 1% in this direction. If they come in from the north, uh, you know, they, they have uh, a long, long gauntlet to have to run through and, you know, a lot of walls to jump and a, and a lot of point defenses to have to fight through to get to the core. It's totally possible, but, um, you know, the whole idea here is to make them commit a large amount of forces into a pocket so that you can burn them down with splash defenses and whatever. So anyway, let's let's uh, let's go ahead and take a look at that uh, that defensive replay. This is the only... I've only I only have one defensive replay from this because uh, you know the base is pretty new, and again you know I'm I'm sure there's somebody out there that can three star this base. You know it may take a few tries, but there's no base out there that is you know not three that is three star proof. The whole point of these bases is to encourage revisits on the base, as well as uh, you know hold them to as few stars as possible. But um, you know this this base is unique in the sense that it it lures or it baits an attack from the west. And if they're not, if they don't have a good plan in place to handle taking out all of these structures to target the town hall, then they're going to be sunk. So this uh, this attack was a town hall ten attack, um, max lava hounds, so quad quad lava hounds, and then lunian. Uh, notice here the overlapping defenses, point defenses, as well as an archer queen um, protecting that air defense, and then. Uh, the loons coming in in a fan shape. Now, pay attention to what the uh, the loons do. They target all of these defensive structures on the outside arms, and then they're going to flow kind of around the base. Now, I am going to lose my air defenses, but that's that's completely fine because there are backup defenses as well as uh, Teslas to, to to help with those. There's a nice clump of balloons up here. Now, watch the um, watch the minions and watch what they target as they get deployed. Because all of these trash buildings are still here. They're with at least as far as the trigger range, the targeting range is concerned. They'll still target these buildings and then split like the Red Sea as they get deployed. And then in a second, you'll see, you know, these balloons got dropped up here, but they targeted something down here, so they've got all that flight time before they actually do anything useful. And you'll see the heroes drop down in just a second. And again, hero drops down there, but look, look what's left to target just this storage. If you drop them too soon. You know, unless most of this base, unless most of the outside of the base is actually taken out, they're not going to be able to target the town hall. And that happened to both the BK and the AQ. So they take a walk around the exterior of the base. And, you know, that's pretty much, there's pretty much not, nothing left for them to target except to, you know, just run around the base. Now this would work for, for defense-led troops. This would work for hogs as well. Uh, to, to an extent, but you know, this would be a tricky base to hog. I'm, I'm sure somebody can figure out a way to hog this base. Uh, but you know, I try to make it so that again, the, the CC is unlurable. They would have to do it with a smaller force. Uh, you know, the AQ is relatively difficult to get to, uh, and she's protected by a lot of point defenses. And then, um, you know, even on top of that, there's still CC troops left over to take out what's left of that troop, uh, to take out what's left of that attacking army. So, yeah, I mean, interesting proof of concept based. Again, the, the, the lessons here are to push the spawn point out, um, creative use of dead spots, uh, targeting dead spots, so that um, you can reroute or just screw up the targeting AI of, uh, of your attacker. Uh, another concept then is, hang on a second, let's just go look at that base. Another concept is, you know, have a take a thoughtful approach to what what buildings you're actually going to to give up. 
uh, army camps make a great buffer especially if you if you know the direction that they'll typically attack from because these take up a lot of space but they only give up one percentage point so all of the real percentage is on the back side of the base which again is uh, protected by aerial defenses so uh, you know they're even if they were to drop an archer, maybe they pick up one or two buildings, but for the most part, the majority, the vast majority of these buildings are covered by some sort of aerial defense. Um, you know, and some of the some of the buildings will just be taken out. There's nothing that you can do about them. You don't have to worry about protecting everything. You just have to worry about protecting the free percentage of your base. So um, yeah, you know, let me think. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, this was this is a this is a pretty interesting experiment to see if that would even work. Uh, and I would say so far it's it's been um, it's been successful. If somebody actually makes it to the point where they can target the town hall, I'll post that replay. But for right now, I'll let this go for a few wars and see how it does. Uh, in other news, if you guys uh, out there are using the murder hole, uh, that that is definitely turning out to be uh, my go-to base for a lot of uh, for a lot of different clan wars. It's um, you know with just a couple of tweaks, I've managed to get it to to defend against Lava Lunian, against Hogs, against Golems, against all kinds of different attacks. And uh, it's working out really well for me. And if it's working out for, well for you, please just drop that in the comments and let me know. Uh, you know, you know, if I get the chance, maybe I can pop in and, and take a look at some of your replays. But um, yeah, that's where we're at with that. I've got a lot more coming uh, in the way of replays and some additional theory craft videos. Uh, if, you, if there's anything that you guys want to see, just drop down, just drop that down in the comments and let me know. But uh, for you know, until then, thanks for tuning in.